and I said, look, it says that this album, the photograph, was made in Macon, Georgia. I said, oh my God, I said, I'm going to take my album, which I bought over here in this case, and I'm going to go down there and find the kind of, I thought the wall might be there, this wall, and take my album and let somebody take my picture, my wife or whoever, me and her together, of my, me and my album, and I, that's all I wanted. But this story that I'm going to tell you, lo and behold, I did that. But on the bizarre trip that took about a week, I wound up with this. I'm going to proceed to tell you the story of how I bizarrely came across one of the cases on the Fillmore East album of the Allman Brothers. This album right here. I have my original album that I bought in 1971 when I was at Gainesville High School. It's in the case back here behind me. Why I was interested in the Allman Brothers Band and other bands is because back then, I mean, if you was a boy from Georgia, the first band with long hair that was cool came from Georgia. I mean, they were from Macon, Georgia. And, you know, and once the word spread and they really got out there by constantly going and playing like at Piedmont Park, free concerts and just free in Macon. And, you know, they'd just set up and play everywhere for free. And then they'd go play gigs on the road constantly going everywhere. And the word got out to us boys at school and next thing you know, we had an album called the Allman Brothers Band, which is their first one. And then Idlewild South come out, their second one. And then lo and behold, this album right here came out and that's what started it all because man, it went like crazy. Because they decided that their first two albums, you know, they wasn't really going that good across the country, just regionally. They said, we need to make a live album, like what we sound like, you know, when you come see us live, we need to do that. And so they did, and it's noted as being one of the best live rock albums ever. It's even, they even put it in the Smithsonian to preserve it. since probably I was old enough to drive, which is right at 1972 when the Eat a Peach album come out and I had an eight track tape player in my Chevelle and I probably wore out 10 of them eight tracks uh, from Fillmore East and Allman Brothers and Eat a Peach cause all Georgia boys wanted to hear that. Uh, but what I've always done is I love Georgia, and I, I, I collect a lot of Georgia artifacts, like pottery and just all kinds of stuff, and uh, early Georgia furniture, and uh, I've always went out way before, you know, you got the show, The Pickers. Well, I was doing that back in the 70s, and that's what me and my wife, that's what we do all the time when we're not uh, when I'm not working, and uh, which this is work too, is we go out and find the bazaar, and uh, but I never would have dreamed I would uh, find something that had never to do with this, because I used to sit and look and stare at this when it came out and was listening to it. That's what was fun about albums. You could put them on kind of like eating cereal with a cereal box and look and read the album and just wow now you know you don't really do that of course me I'm old school as you can get 
no technology. Even though I'm being filmed, maybe this will be on a computer. I don't know. But I don't want a computer. I don't really like them. I, I love how you did things in the past. You get more things. It, there's nothing like doing things with your hands just out. And the things I'm looking for, you'd never find them on a computer sitting at home. You got to get out and nearly get snake bit and get mosquito bit, and you get to talk to people. I wear overalls because I love them, but I get out in the country and I talk to country people. And then I might talk to a city slicker. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to tell you the story of how I found this case, which is J Mo's, one of his conga cases. There's another one that was sitting over here at the side that stenciled uh, vertically. There's only three of these cases known to exist. Right here is the guitar that just sold for $1,250,000. And why is because Eric Clapton was doing the album Derek and the Dominoes. Well, he'd heard about Dwayne Allman, and they were playing a concert not far from Criteria Stereos in Miami. And he said, hey, the, Dwayne and them's down there. You want to go see him? He, uh, yeah. So and this was at night. So they went down there, and they sat against right at the front. And Dwayne Allman, he didn't even see them. He just happened to look. Now, they were in a song, one of their jams that might would last for an hour, one song. And they were up there, and he just stopped playing. And like Dickie Betts that plays lead up there with him thought, like, what the heck? And he looks down, he says, man, right there's Eric Clapton. And so Eric wound up to try to make a long story short. He said, come to the studio, and, and I've got plans I want you to help. I think make work on my album. So this guitar, y'all know y'all have heard the song Layla, I guess, by Eric Clapton, Derek and the Dominoes. All the intro and figuring out the intro and all that was Dwayne Allman's idea. And he did it on this guitar. All right, now let me try to tell you the story uh, about this case in... in however I got it, I, I really don't know, but it started out, you know, I found out that that album cover was photographed in making, and all my life, and all of the other guys thought it was uh, photographed up out from the Fillmore East, maybe up there on, beside the building. Well, when I found this out, that it was in Macon, you know, not far from where I live, I wanted to go there, and I wanted to take the album and have my picture made. Wow, you know, because this has always been, you know, it and the other Allman Brothers, especially Eat a Peach, my favorite albums. I always take one of my vacation times around uh, my birthday, and uh, so I thought, well, that's when I'm going to take, take my album, which is the one I've got about 20 of these albums. And, I, and I, I'm going to take my album and uh, photograph it. And it, that's going to take place when I take off about a week or two during my birthday. And so I made plans to do that. And so my second day off, which was I got off on a Saturday, a Friday night. On Sunday... Me and my wife went looking just, you know, that's why I was in this place is because we look for all kinds of just all kind of Georgia artifacts and things. And it was getting late in the day. Now, let me tell you this little part. At the end of my driveway before I went out on the road, I told my wife, I said, should I, I'm thinking of going to the mountains, but something is telling me to go back down south. So I took the ride out of my driveway and my wife said, well, we was in that area 
what do you think? Uh, last weekend, I, th I said, well, something's just telling me to go back down to these certain areas. And it was kind of late in the day. We didn't even leave till like 1 o'clock, you know, in, in the day. And the area I was going to was going to take me about an hour's drive or so. So we get down there and we go in a bunch of places and around. And it's getting like on up at the end of the day when these places might be closing. And, and we go in this big place and normally... I go down this aisle right at the front, and me and my wife, we always split up because that way four eyes is better than two, and she's concentrating over here, and I'm over here. And if we need to meet up about something, we do. Well, this rare first time ever, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to start way in the back of this big building and work my way up to the front, and that way I'll be at the front when they close. So I headed back, and as I was going, I was looking down the aisles, and next to the last aisle, I looked down there, and I thought, man, there is Alan Kelly. And he owns, of all things, or I never would even be mentioning this, he owns a music store in Commerce, Georgia. And it's called, it used to be called Crazy Owls, now it's Guitar Outlet. And so I, and we've been friends a long time. And uh, so I head down there and I thought, man, I'm going to tell him what I'm going to do next weekend. I'm going to Macon and I'm taking my album and I'm going to have my picture made with my album. That's all I wanted. And so I get down there and we're, you know, talking and... I didn't pay attention to the little section where I was at, and he didn't. It was really kind of up from this little thing I'm going to tell you about. But but I'm telling him, wow, man, I'm going to Macon. I'm talking about Dwayne. I'm talking about the wall. You know, this is the wall. Did you know it was photographed in Macon? Heck no. Here I am, nearly 60 years old, he said, and I didn't know that. I said, I didn't either. I'm going. So we talked a minute, and he told me, do you have the access channel? And I said, yeah. He said, there's a thing, this is in 2016, he said, there's a thing comes on called the Big Interview. And he said, uh, Greg Allman, is, they're interviewing him. Have you seen it? And I said, no, but I'm going to watch it. Anyhow, his wife was up somewhere. My wife was over here, you know. And he, you know, we said, well, I see you, Alan. He said, okay, Jack, I'll talk to you later. Good luck next weekend. I said, okay. I turned around. And when I, I started walking, and when I turned around, somebody said, hey, mister, hold on a minute. He said, my name is T.F., and he said, I'm from Macon, Georgia. And he said, I've lived down there all my life. And this man was retired. He's probably in his 70s. And he said, I've never heard anybody down there talk about the Allman Brothers and Dwayne and the wall like you just did. He said, man, he said, I heard you and I had to come over here. And he said, I just wanted to tell you that I've got one of them cases. And I said, bull crap. I said, what case you talking about? One on that album. I said, you ain't. And so we talked a minute, and we talked about, so I don't know how this came up, but I am a Mason, and found out he was a Mason. And so we talked about that, and we exchanged phone numbers. I said, because I really, is there a chance of me getting that case? He said, well, he said, how I got that case is, he said, not far off Vineville from the big house, there's an old cotton mill. And he said, Phil Walden of Capricorn Records used to rent some of that building. And the Allman Brothers used to put a lot of their equipment in there, park trucks in it, and they had even walked from the big house right over there and sometimes set up and practice and sit around and talk and maybe drink a beer or whatever. And he said, 
you know, and he said, later on, when Capricorn closed, he said, you know, the Allman Brothers broke up, got back together and broke up again. And he said, when uh, Capricorn got in trouble and closed, and they was cleaning that building out, he said, by now, he said, this is 1981. He said, I know this because I built a new house in North Macon. And he said, I'm, I'm one that uh, I go to all kind of uh, like junk sales and stuff. And he said, this was on Friday evening. And he said, I don't even know why I went back by there. He said, I was looking for whatever. And he said, they were file cabinets and just all kinds of stuff. He said, I thought about getting one of them. And he said, there was nobody there because this was late in the evening. And he said, I seen this round case that had the Allman Brothers. And he said, all this stuff, they're fixing to throw it away. And he said, just something told me to get that case. And he said, I paid about $5 for it. He said, because they was fixing to throw it. And he said, I necessarily, he said, I'm not a rock fan. He said, I don't even listen to rock, he said, but I'm from Macon and I got that case. And he said, I put it in my garage, in my house, my new house. And he said, after all these years, I've set stuff in front. He said, you can't even park in my garage. And I've set stuff all in front. And he said, I'll have to find this case and dig it back out. He said, because truthfully, I hadn't even seen it since I put it in there. He's talking about 1981. So, <clears throat> anyhow, he tells me this, maybe quicker, and, and, and we exchange numbers, and he walks off. I said, now, dadgummit, I told him what I was going to do. Well, he heard me talking to the other guy, Alan, and uh, I said, now, I want to see about getting this. I said, my birthday's about Wednesday. And I said, I'd like to get that for my birthday, man. He said, well, I'll see what I can do. And so he goes off, and I turn around. And when I turn around, man, it's big, like a junk, antique stuff mall in a big old building. There I'm looking at vintage albums and vintage stereo equipment, and I look up right there to A's, and there's an Allman Brothers record. And by then, nothing has happened, and, and, it, and it didn't dawn on me right then. This dawned on me later. And so I looked at that, and I walked off, and I go back around, and me and my wife leave, and I see uh, Mr. T.F. on up. I said, now, I'm going to call you. He said, okay. So I hadn't had my Please Be With Me book read. It made me come back home later on that night, and I got that book, and I finished it in, in, in just a minute and was reading another book, but when I finished Please Be With Me, something told me to go ahead and call, and I've learned over the years not to really to be, you know, if it's something that you might get, don't press it, but something told me to press it. So I called him, and he answers the phone. This is like like on uh, 4 o'clock in the evening on like a Wednesday evening. And he answers the phone, and he says, Well, I'm in the lodge, and I'm setting up for Eastern Star. He said, My wife is in the Eastern Star, and he said, We're going to have a big thing and I'm setting it up. He said, I can't do nothing today, but it's going to be tomorrow. So the next day when it was my birthday, about four o'clock, I couldn't wait no longer because I had to, it, either it's going to happen, it's true, or it's not. And I wanted to get that out of my mind. I called. He's going down the road on the expressway in North Macon. He said, I'll be home in 15 minutes. And he said, uh, Jack, I'll dig it out right quick. He said, it shouldn't take me long. He said, I hadn't seen it, but I'll dig it out. And uh, I'll send you a picture of it. I said, well, now I'm sitting here waiting. 
He said, okay. And about that time, the phone rings. And I can't show you all the pictures, but I'm going to show you the first picture that I got. And I about passed out and fell out of my chair. He sent me that picture, and I knew immediately what it was. And I started shaking and nearly about started crying. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because, I mean, and I didn't have it yet, but I had one ace in the hole. Well, I said, you know, I'm just a country boy. I said, I'm not no rich man, blah, blah. And I said, what's the chances of me getting that? And he said, well, Jack, there's a very good chance. And he, I said, well, what would you have to have for it? And he told me, and I said, okay, listen. I said, I've got a friend, a retired dentist friend, him and his wife, that are fixing to sell their house, and they're actually going to move up in North Georgia, up in the mountains. And I said, can he come on over there and pick that case up because I won't do the deal now. He said, Jack, I don't want to do that. He said, the reason why is I want to see your face when you come to my house and pick this case up and everything. He said, let it just be me and you. And I said, well, that's a good idea. I said, because look, I'm coming. I was coming to making anyway, and I'm coming, but I just was going to let him go on over there and get it. And I said, and this just came to my mind like just somebody just put it in there right then. I said, I tell you what, how about me going to the old Capricorn studio down there? And I said, because right in there is where the wall was, if it's still there. And I said, that case probably hadn't been there since this picture was made. And I said, how about meeting me there at about 1.30? I said, because what I want to do, I want to go to Dwayne and Barry's grave, because then Greg had not passed, or Butch. And I said, first I want to go to their grave site, and then I want to go to the little building, I can't say the name of it, where they first played their first paying gig in making when nobody knew who they was and they played on the second floor. I want to go to there. And then I want to go to across from Capricorn where you're going to meet me and me and my wife's going to take pictures with my album. And then I want to go to H&H &H restaurant where they used to eat and Mama Louise, they didn't have no money They'd go in there and get one or two plates as six members, and she'd say, I tell you what, I'm going to give all y'all plates, and when y'all make it one day, y'all can fix me up. And boy, they did. And uh, so, and I said, meet me at 1.30. I said, we'll, we'll eat at the H&H, &H, and I'll come down the hill, down in the lowlands where Capricorn is. And at that time, the building was like, I thought, man, it's going to fall in. Nobody, I don't think, knew what was going to happen. So it rocked on a few minutes, and me and my wife was just real like, oh, man, is this going to happen? And in a minute, here comes Mr. Up in a truck, an older Dodge truck with a camper on it, camper shell, in about a 1980-something Dodge, it looked like brand new. And he pulls up, and he gets the case out, and I'm about to pass out. And now, check this out. Over here on the corner, and I done been eyeballing this and telling my wife, I said, God Almighty, there's the Middle Georgia TV station. Here we are. Here's Capricorn Records. Here's where they took the picture. Man, I feel like Greg, J. Mo, whoever needs to be witnessing this. I said, but here we are. And, and you know, and so 
let me, I'm going to show you this picture, the first picture of me with the case. This picture right here, Mr. TF and my wife was standing here, and we were so beside ourselves, I couldn't, I didn't even think to have a picture made with him. But that can happen. But he, my wife, was standing here thinking, my goodness, he took this picture in the background. Now, this is June of 2016. In the background is Capricorn Records. I got my album that I bought when I write it 16 years old. And here is probably the first time this case has ever met up with one of these albums. There it is. J. Moe's Road Case that's on the front of Fillmore East above Barry Oakley and Greg Allman's head. I leave the case with my dear friend that's a retired dentist. But, now get this, I even went to the big house with the case in my car really wrapped up but I didn't get the case out. And this is the first time because the big house hadn't been open. Well, it had been open a while, but I hadn't had a reason to go to Macon because back when I used to go all the time, my friend Gene Bush, me and him picked together uh, artifacts and antiques. And he died in 2008, and I hadn't been to Macon. And since then, they had restored the big house and opened up an Allman Brothers Museum. But anyhow I go, me and my wife, we go in there and look around. This case is in my car. My friend meets me after we get through. I hand him the case and he's got time because I had to get back home. And the only way to get the case recognition is to leave it because he lived right on up the road. And it took just a little while for them to acknowledge the case and actually put it in the big house. And when they put it in there, here's the first picture of the case where they set it in there with Dwayne Allman's shoes that he had on in front of, on the uh, anthology album, his shoes, they told me, Jack, are you sitting down or do you feel anything because Dwayne's shoes are touching that case. That's both things from the front of two different albums. And I thought I was going to pass out. Because I thought, why is this happening to me? Because all I wanted to do is have a picture made with my album. Since I have found that case, and I brought that case out of where it has been sitting in a garage for 30-something years and nearly thrown in the trash, Thank goodness for the man that, that, that got it and just decided. And like I say, he didn't even listen to the Allman Brothers, but he is from Macon. He was into other music at that time. Uh, I go down there and I get to pick this book up. The Big House Collection. Here's the photograph that you seen Kurt West uh, actual picture of him taking a picture of this. And and this is my legendary uh, road, J. Moe's Road Case off of the iconic album Fillmore East. And they actually mentioned this case twice in this book. So that's an honor about this case. And I just wanted to tell y'all this story because nobody uh, would know about it and the the story is what's bizarre because 
five minutes time going this way or that way, this never would have happened. It took three people in different directions from different parts of the state to come together at that moment and for me to be talking about this case to a guy that owned a music store that I hardly ever see out of, and to be talking about this case and this happened, can anybody explain it to me? I don't think it was coincidence. I've had coincidental things to happen. There's no way. It, it, it's just bizarre to me how I got this case. It's almost like I had intervention, but I don't know. That's what's constantly in my... I'll, I'll sit and look at my case, and I have to pinch myself like, how did, how did that happen? When all I wanted to do, like I've done said, stress the fact, all I wanted to do is have a picture with my album. <laughs>